This is the Getting Into Alignment podcast. Here we play in the quantum world of possibilities. If you desire it, you get to have it. My name is Alexa Ray Smith. I'm a business coach and spiritual teacher for women in business. I'm here to help you unlock your personal power and tap into your magnetism so that you can manifest the most incredible life for yourself and build the business of your dreams. These episodes will help you plug into the energy of infinite potentiality and teach you the tools you need to play in this world where limitations don't exist. On this podcast, I'll be talking to you about energetics, mindset, embodiment, spirituality, money, and business. Everything that you want is on the other side of you getting into alignment. Hey everyone, welcome to the Getting Into Alignment podcast. I am so excited that you are here with me. My name is Alexa Ray Smith. If you don't know, I'm a business coach for female entrepreneurs and I'm really a spiritual teacher. So in my world, we're going to be talking about business, energetics, mindset, all of the things that like really allow you to be a powerful leader in the industry for you to be able to really create the life and business of your dreams. Because in all honesty, the only way for you to get the financial freedom, the financial, or excuse me, the financial freedom, the location freedom, and the time freedom that you desire is to create your own business. And that's why so many people enter the world of energy and manifestation and then end up going into the world of business because they realize that this is when you get to fully come online with your magic and you get to really make an impact and do what you love. And then you get to build a lifestyle that works for you instead of having a career or having a job that you have to go into, or you have to really, you know, like not live your full life because you're subscribing to other people's rules or you're having to go into a place with people that aren't really in alignment with your highest interest or whatever the case may be. So in all honesty, I really stopped recording podcasts for a while. As you can tell, like I was really inconsistent because I used to love podcasting so much. Um, It's You've heard me speak of it before, but podcasts were really the thing that when I was working for the New York state government for eight years and I was just becoming more and more miserable, podcasts were the thing that really allowed me to get into the personal development world for me to really be able to awaken my consciousness, to have like a deeper understanding of my spirituality to be involved in these conversations that were not happening in my reality. It was such a beautiful place for me because I felt so alone, probably my entire life, honestly, but even more so as I was going through more and more of a spiritual awakening and really like it was so real to me that there was a matrix reality. Like, I just think of the Truman Show when you just like meet the edge and you see the set design and you're like, oh, this was all fake. And I always saw that. And I was like, are we really all still getting stressed and worried about these trivial things that don't matter that we're manufacturing anyway? And it just like wasn't the vibe for me. So I went down this rabbit hole of listening to podcasts and then taking programs. I really like, I stopped following anybody I knew in real life on social media because I was like, I need a break from this matrix. And social media became a place for me to really like tap into this new world that I was never a part of, but I had found that like so many women had been in or were building businesses in. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is just everything my soul has ever wanted and desired and like more. Oh my God. And I loved podcasting and I started a podcast back in the day and 
I really just didn't know what I wanted to say. There were so many things that I was interested in. I'm a manifesting generator. So like boxing me in just feels like you're suffocating me and like literally draining my life force. So I felt like podcasts were so niched down and it just didn't resonate with me and I just didn't know what to podcast about. So for so long, I just didn't podcast and I listened to others and I was getting coached and I was creating programs and like doing all of the things. And what I realized is, and like I've just realized this, is that I fell out of love with podcasts because I have grown so much and I have literally changed myself at a cellular level through all of the dark nights of the souls, through all of the growth. I've microdosed a lot this year. I've been working with a lot of plant medicines. I've always utilized cannabis for my autoimmune disease. And for a while I struggled with that too, because so many spiritual teachers were like, you can't, you can't do drugs. And it was like, but this is my medicine and I can't eat without it. And you don't know what it's like to have an autoimmune disease that wasn't diagnosed for 22 years. And basically I feel like I have like I'm suffering from cancer when I don't have cannabis. So there were like all of these things that I was going through on in my spiritual awakening as a business owner, like da, 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 da. And the reason why I was so like out of love with podcasts, honestly, was because there weren't any podcasts that were activating me anymore. There weren't any podcasts that were speaking to me at the level that I needed to be spoken to now and not needed to, but that I desired to be spoken to. Like, let me clarify that there is no need in my world anymore. I've moved so far from the lack based need mentality of the matrix. Oh, there goes my heat. Let me pause this. And so the only time that I were really recording podcasts was when I was getting asked a question and I was doing coaching from somebody or doing coaching for somebody. And then I was getting this question over and over again. So I was like, oh, this obviously needs to become a podcast episode because this isn't just one woman who's asking me this question. This is on the collective consciousness. So that's when I was recording these podcasts. And again, because I was just so out of love with podcasting and the whole process of editing a podcast is just miserable for me. I have misophonia, which is, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is you are literally, it feels like nails on a chalkboard when you hear somebody breathe. And when you hear someone eat like noises out of a human, <gasps> Ugh. It's just absolutely the worst. I don't know how many podcasts I have unsubscribed from because women drink their drink during the podcast episode and don't like stop recording. Ugh, it's disgusting. So for me, because I've suffered COVID and I have, um, what the hell is it called? A deviated septum. It's like very difficult for me to breathe now and not make a lot of noise. And this happened last year, ever since I got COVID really badly. So I was really insecure about like these deep breaths that I have to take and hearing it just makes it's disgusting to me, honestly. So I felt like I had to spend all of this time editing out every single breath of my podcast. And it just had me lose any, like any love for podcasting that I had left. I was like, oh, I fucking hate this. Again, I'm a manifesting generator. I do not like nitty gritty things. Like, oh, it's so boring. Have somebody else do that. Like totally. And so then I just started like not even editing the episodes and that felt so good for me. But again, I was still just like the love wasn't there for it. Then recently I realized that I had, it wasn't that I stopped loving podcast. It was that I had grown into a whole new woman. So the podcast that supported me when I first started my personal growth journey, they, they don't resonate with me anymore. I'm sick of hearing podcasts of 
the same individual on 18 million podcasts having the same conversation with the same stories. Like I'm sick of learning from mentors who tell you the same story over and over again. And like, I'm sorry, but Tony Robbins does this. Once I got through two of his seminars last year, I was like, oh my God, we get it. I could recite this story. There's, you know, a woman in our industry that's made $24 million and she does the same thing. She tells the same stories over and over again. If I have to hear the pineapple story one more fucking time, oh my God, I just can't. I just like, I can't handle listening to the same things over and over again. We're not growing. Like we're not. So that's why every time somebody has asked me to be on the podcast, I'm like, no, honestly, I love having conversations with people. It's my favorite fucking thing in the world, but I can't be that person who is having the same conversation 80 million times. Like it's so boring to me. I have lived so many lifetimes that I have so many stories and they all can be so impactful. I really, like if I'm ever interviewed on podcasts, I go out of my way to tell different stories because I don't want you to know me from like five different stories. That's not who I am. And every version of me has different stories and has different lessons and has different wisdom. And recently I have found women who are activating me again. I have found female entrepreneurs that are at the level that I desire to plug into. They're having the conversations that do activate me. And for a while, because I was following that $24 million coach who is making all this money, but she doesn't have books. She doesn't have a podcast. Like she doesn't have anything to hang her hat on except for her clients wins, which is great. Right. But like, I don't want to be an invisible coach. I don't want you to have to learn about me from someone else. I want to give valuable content daily for free because this is what helped me get to where I am. And these were the conversations that brought me to another reality that upped my frequency, that allowed me to see what was possible and brought me up to this level. And for so long, I was listening to and following these coaches who I thought activated me because they were making so much money, but I really don't resonate with the way that they do business. I fucking hate taking a program on Facebook and I really despise the coaches that make me have to go to Facebook to pay them to learn from them. Like it's the cheapest, the laziest way to run your goddamn business. And how did we even get there? I have a whole post on this. I could do a literal seven hour long podcast on that alone. And I'm not going to go into it, but it was like, just because women are making money doesn't mean that they're activating me. And I don't want to be one of those women that you look at and you go, Oh, I know what coach she follows because look at the language she's using. Look at the way she creates her content. Look at the way she sells her offers. Because let's be honest, no one is really innovating that much in the industry anymore. Everyone is just copying someone else who's making more money than them. And I'm like, over it. You know, I don't want everything to be so cookie cutter and that's what the industry has become. So I've decided that I'm going to do it differently. I am going to be one of those women who makes insane amounts of money and I'm going to give you insanely valuable content for free on all of the goddamn platforms, except for Facebook. Fuck Facebook. I'll never be on there. Like, <laughs> let's be honest, but I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. I am in all of these places and I have a podcast and I'm recording lives and I'm uploading them to the podcast and on YouTube. I'm doing it differently, but I'm doing it in my way. And I want to invite you into this because so many women in the world feel like they have to do business one way because they're seeing these really successful coaches. And what I've realized is, is the way we're going as an industry isn't sustainable. We can't keep copying women who we think are more successful than us and creating a business model like them, especially because let's be honest, most of the women who are really successful as a healer, or as a coach online, they don't know anything about business. They've just started making money online. They got really good with the energetics of money and then they copied somebody else's business model. But like, 
If your business model is running your entire business through Facebook, that's not a business model. You don't own your work. You don't own your content. You could literally lose it all overnight. Like that is, that's not how we should be as a business coach. That's irresponsible for you to be teaching other women to run a business like that. And because I am professionally and academically trained in business, I can see the very masculine side of it but I also love the feminine energetic side. And for so long this year, I just immersed myself in the feminine energetics because if we're being fully honest, like I was awful at it. I am a recovering type, a control freak. I was, I was, I went to a school where from kindergarten to fifth grade, there were 30 kids in my class And there were five girls for two years. We had six girls. There were no girls. Like it was a bunch of men. My father put me on an all male baseball team when I was five years old. I played softball for eight years. I played basketball for eight years. I got straight A's my entire life. I was the best at everything that I did always. Like I excel at everything that I do. I'm fucking incredible. If I'm not incredible, I don't do it because I don't like it. Like that's my vibe. That's always been my vibe. I, my first job ever was mucking out horse stalls when I was 16 years old. And sometimes I used to have to ride my bicycle to go do that. I would muck out 25 horse stalls, which means clean 25 horse stalls. I would give hay to 25 horses. Hay barrels are 30 pounds a piece. And I would wake up earlier to go to my job than I did to go to high school. And with somebody with an autoimmune disease, the earlier I wake up, the worse my stomach is. So like I have my entire life been able to override my body and to get into the masculine and to excel. Like that's what I do. So the masculine, like I am fucking incredible at it. Incredible. But I also lived the past eight years of my life while working for the state of New York, doing that, excelling, being the best at what I did, learning the, learning the information, it, literally mastering it so quickly that I would become a subject matter expert and became a subject matter expert in every single field that I worked in for every single agency that I worked for, for the New York state government, because I was that fucking good. Get it, get good, get fast is a motto that my cosmetology teacher taught me when I was 19 and I apply that to everything. And for eight years, I was the best at what I did and I was relied on by entire units to do what I do because most people couldn't do it. And the second I was bored and done, I was like, okay, bye. I'll give you all of the training materials that I've made. I'll train anyone you need me to train, but I'm going and starting something completely new. I want to learn it. I want to get good. I want to train somebody and then move on again. No one did that. Like the standards that I set for myself are so unrealistic and most people wouldn't do that. Like I'm a very high achieving woman, but what I've realized is I don't want to build a business where I'm hustling my way through. I don't want to build a business where I am the fucking best at what I do, but I'm overriding my intuition and my body and my health at all costs. When I first went into coaching, I was a wellness coach and a mindset coach because I went through having to become gluten-free and then I became plant-based and I saw the difference that my diet created in my health, in my mental health, in how I felt about myself, in my confidence. Like that's why for me, I can't compartmentalize, especially as a woman, because our brains just aren't designed to do that. Literally, they're not wired to compartmentalize like a man's is, but I just also just can't. And that's why all of these topics overlap. And it's so important for me to have a healthy lifestyle and to have healthy habits. And that's why I still eat plant-based. That's why I work out every single day. That's why I drink a lot of water. That's why I do a lot of biohacking. Like all of these things are so important. And for so long, I didn't want to be a business coach because it felt like if I was a business coach, I couldn't talk about health. I couldn't talk about mental health. I couldn't talk about what you were eating. I couldn't talk about your healthy habits, but to be a business owner, these are all part of the conversation. And what I've found is that 
when we allow ourselves to show up as all of ourselves, instead of trying to niche ourselves into one specific box, that's when we get to show up as authentically as we were born to. And we give other people permission to show up authentically as themselves. And that's why I'm going to have all these conversations with you on the podcast, in my coaching, in my content. I'm really going full force on me. You're going to hear me talk a lot about putting your blinders on because this is something that I really had to do. There's so many women in the coaching industry that are preaching long-term mentorship is the only way to become successful. And all of them had the same mentor, have had the same mentor, that same $24 million mentor. They've had that mentor and they all say the same thing, but what ends up happening is they're all doing business the same way. They're all saying the same things. They're all basically just carbon copies of her and I don't want that. So I've really stepped away from taking programs from that woman and I've really stepped away from following all of these business coaches that are under that woman because under that woman because I just I want my business to be authentically me. So I've really been muting and unfollowing a lot of people. I've really been reevaluating what podcasts are beneficial to me, what content's beneficial to me, what people are meeting me at the level that I'm ready to be met at, what conversations do I want to be a part of. And for me, it's so much bigger than business, but business allows you to fully turn your magic online and to be fully in love with your life because you're the ones that are setting the standards. You are the ones that's creating the rules. And here's the thing is like business is your soul's expression. It's your art that you're bringing to the world and it's unique and it should be beautifully unique and it should have its own essence and its own flair. And yes, of course, there's going to be terminology that you hear me use that other women are using. And there's going to be stuff that I say that's completely different. And the way that I'm going to apply meaning to it or the wisdom that I'm going to draw from it is going to be completely different. For so long, I put all of these women on pedestals because they were making so much money And when you actually look at these women, like there's not much difference from them to me. There's actually a few women that I was like, oh my God, she's so incredible. And I put her on this huge pedestal and then I got into her program and invested. And I was like, oh, like, this is it. Like this was the conversation. Like, this is what you're, this is what you're talking about. This is how you're recording content. Like this, this is it. It was like, what? I could do better than this. And that's not an, like an egoic thing. It's saying I put these women on a pedestal only because of the amount of money they were making, thinking that they were just some like goddess of a woman. And then when you get into their world, you're like, oh, she's just a human. And it wasn't that I'm like, oh my God, I'm better than these women. But it was like, oh my God, why the fuck am I giving this woman so much power and praise when I just need to show the fuck up because I have more power than that in my pinky. You know what I mean? And again, this isn't a comparison thing, but it's like, I want you to really look at who are you putting on a pedestal and why? Because I guarantee you, you're putting people on pedestals that have a higher following than you and that are making more money than you. But is that really it? Like, is that what we're doing? Because that's just us recreating another masculine 3D paradigm world where we're putting money on a pedestal. And anything you put on a pedestal is going to feel far away from you because you are separating yourself from that thing. And one thing I've been doing a lot lately, which is going to be the complete opposite that you hear any woman say in the industry is spending less time in the coaching world, spending less time being plugged into other women that are teaching other women that are coaching. Now, there are a few exceptions. There are a few women that I'm like, yes, like I'm really activated by you. I really love what you're saying. I really love the message you're bringing online. I really love, like right now, I'm really into the women who are bridging the business gap with the spiritual gap and are making conscious businesses and conscious CEOs, but like 
also multi-million dollar CEOs. Like I really want to be a part of that conversation where the personal power is, like where the energy is leading. And it's not about the money. It's about the woman you're becoming while making the money. It's about the legacy you're building while you're also simultaneously going through the ashes and burning everything that was an old identity, everything that was a story, everything that wasn't a part of you, but you took on in your younger years to burn that all down and for you to rise anew and to look at the new world with a new lens and say, like, how do I really want to view myself? How do I really want to have a life experience? Like, what rules am I subscribing to that don't longer suit me? Who am I following that I'm just following because she makes more money than me, but I don't actually like her? Like, honestly, I want you to be really like, I want you to take a moment with that. How many women are you following right now that you don't actually like, but you're envious of the amount of money that she makes? Because that's not it. Those aren't the women that are doing business in the way that you want to be doing business. So those aren't the people that you should be looking up to. And in all honesty, the more business coaches that I followed, the less powerful I felt in my business, the more judgment I went through, the more comparison I went through. And the more I felt like I didn't have a voice because I didn't know what to say because I saw all of these conflicting ideas and I saw all of these ways of doing business that didn't actually land with me because I'm academically and professionally trained in business and it's just like, duh, not sustainable. And like, you know, just like the lazy marketing, like let's take a screenshot of our notes app because that's trendy. That's not sustainable. And that's not you building a brand, like making content is easy and it should be fun. And that's what we're doing in building the brand, my December program. And that's why I'm moving more into these masculine things because for so long in my business, I was like, well, it can't be masculine. It can't be strategy based. Cause that's what I did for eight years and blah, I'm going to repel against any structure. But then it was like, my feminine was flowing all over the place. I didn't have a container to really structure my feminine flow. And it is so needed. And as I said, like, I'm fucking brilliant at the masculine. I needed a lot of help with the feminine though. And now since I've been in both worlds and I've seen it both ways and I've experienced it on my own, I now even more than ever am more activated to come on here and to share because there's a lot of women talking about how the coaching industry is changing and how we're going to see a lot of changes and we need more leaders in the industry. And ironically, most of the women calling themselves leaders are still following the exact business model of their coach. And that's not it. So I want to give you permission and tell you right now that it's okay. And I honestly recommend you not working with a coach. And I honestly recommend you not following all the business coaches. And I honestly recommend you not seeing what's going on with the industry. Of course, like with everything, there's a balance because understanding social media, staying relevant on social media, like it takes you understanding what goes into social media, like what's being said, all of those things. But can you see what's going on with the industry and stay in your own lane? That is something that I have been working on this past year. And I really encourage you to go through your social media and the people that you're following and say, does this woman really activate me or am I just envious of the amount of money that she's making? And really like go through this because self-leadership is so important. How do you lead yourself when you see another woman making more money than you? How do you lead yourself when you see a woman who has more followers than you? How are you leading yourself? These are the conversations that we really need to have. And the other part of this is, is when you are following less people in your industry, it's easier for you to be able to tap into your authentic voice because you're spending more time connecting to yourself, becoming a clear channel to receive wisdom, guidance, information, and you're not having to compare your current space with what everyone else is doing. And there's such liberation in that. I've really been loving finding content and following women, because let's be honest, I mostly follow women, that 
are doing things differently. Like for me right now, I actually don't care about how much money you're making. I care that you stand out. I care that your messaging is different. I care that you are saying something that no one else is saying. Like there are literally three coaches right now that I follow that have the same exact course name. There's like, and I don't know that this is intentional or not, but they have the same exact course name. And then there's, there's another name like that four of them have. So we're at the point now where we're not only even creating the same programs, they're the exact same fucking program. Like I'm sure the information is a little different, but they have the exact same fucking name. Like that's to the point where we're at that we're so unoriginal that we can't even come up with our own naming. You know what I mean? Like that's not it. This isn't innovation. If you're if, if you can't stand out because you're basically just an imitation of someone else, like that's, that doesn't give you zest. That doesn't give you magnetism. And so I really, I really want to encourage you to make sure that you're not doing this, that you're not creating content like someone else, that you're not talking in the way someone else is talking, that you're not literally copycatting, 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 someone's branding, someone's messaging, somebody's programs, their business structure. Like we got into business so that we could live our lives our own way and so that we can become CEOs of an empire. Are you gonna fall in love with your business for the long run if you built it in a way that someone else told you to? I can't even tell you the amount of times that I've had coaching where the coach told me, to do something that did not feel right in like my business. And I actually told them like when I was transitioning out of human design readings, the amount of business coaches that were like, Oh, but like, you're amazing at it. You you've given hundreds of readings. You are so good. Like, you know, human design correctly. You're not speaking trendy human design. Like I've never heard anyone talk about human design. You have to keep it. And I was like, no, like my soul's done. I'm over it. I can't have another conversation about what's a generator and what's a manifesting generator. Like I just can't do it. I can't listen to any more women tell me as a projector that they can't work more than four hours because they don't know human design and they just learned it from somebody or the amount of people that are saying that you can manifest by a specific manifester or a non-specific manifester. Like I got so jaded by the human design world because so many people are teaching it wrong. And I got sick of constantly being like, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. So instead of allowing myself to transition, they were like, well, you got to keep the human design in there. That's what you're really good at. Da, 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 da. And I was like, huh, well, I'm not excited to be in my business anymore because I really wanted to transition into energetics and business coaching and, and really switching it up. And I, and then I felt like I couldn't because I had so many people being like, but you need to keep it there. These are the things, right? Like even a coach doesn't know what's best for you. They can meet you and they can try and help you. But at the end of the day, you need to listen to your own strategy and your own authority when it comes to human design. You need to be able to listen to your own intuition. And that's why I say that sometimes I think it's great to not have coaching because you get to find out who you are and what you're made of and where you're dropping your power, where you're not leading yourself, what patterns you're allowing yourself to be in. You're not trying to put on a facade in a coaching container because you're just showing up for yourself fully and you have to lead yourself because there's nobody there to fall on like a crutch. And I don't think Coaching should be a crutch, but I also think that this is what's happening. And I think that when you fully stay plugged into someone else's energy for a long time, you start taking on their essence and then you're not the holy human that you were born to be. So I don't know. I was going to come on here and give you a whole nother message, but I've really been honoring the fact that I've just been channeling information and it's perfect and it's exactly said the way that it needs to be said and the people that are here to hear it, they're hearing it. And I'm not going to question and I'm not going to doubt and I'm not going to sugarcoat and I'm not going to not say things because I think I'm going to offend somebody. 
I, if I offend you, good. You know what I mean? Like we got to stop trying to speak to everybody because not everyone is for you. And let's be honest, you don't want everyone in your world. Like we need to start setting higher standards for ourselves and for the people that we bring into our world. And that is how we fall in love with our businesses. And that's how we stay activated in our businesses. And that's how we can start doing stuff in our business in a way that we want to, regardless of whether everyone else is doing it or not. And so, yeah, like I want to be the disruptor that I've always been and I want to disrupt the industry and I want to disrupt you and I want to tell you things that you might not be told because I still feel like there's those coaches that are super masculine and they're telling you to still get on a sales call. Like, oh my God, ew. If somebody tells me to get on a sales call, like please run, like run the fuck away if somebody is still telling you to get on a sales call. But at the same time, then all of the feminine energetics coaches are selling you the exact same fucking thing. So it's like, how can you build a business where you're not operating in those like sleazy, cringe worthy tactics, like getting on a sales call and cold DMing people. But like, how can you also step into the world of feminine energetics and have your own voice? You know what I mean? Like this is where the power comes from. And I find that so many women like feel like imposters or want to hide from their business or they want to burn it all to the ground. And if that's the case, I want you to really ask yourself, am I building my business in a way that my soul is lit up by? Or am I building a business in the way that somebody else told me I should? Or in a way that I saw online and I just feel like this is going to work? Because here's the thing is you become magnetic when you stop looking at what everyone else is doing and you start doing it your own fucking way. Like this is magnetism. Magnetism is staying in your lane, standing in your power and grounding in and going deeper in your work, in your experiences, in what truth comes to you. Because if you're getting downloads from the divine, of course, like we're one collective consciousness, so there might be similarities, but your messaging should be different than someone else's. The name of your program shouldn't be the same as someone else's. And that's not to say like, if you come up with an idea for a program and a name for a program, you need to go look to see if anyone else has done that. But if you're fully tuned in, connected to your magic, to your channel, then you wouldn't even have to worry about it. And so I think the main message of this is I want you to be activated in your business. Like we are, this is December 1st right now. I want you to really evaluate what you're doing in your business. What parts aren't lighting you up? What parts feel like work and not in a good way? What parts are expanding you? What part of your business are you really loving right now? What are you really loving talking about? Like this is the time for you to evaluate what you've been loving and what you haven't been loving and pivoting. So that way you go into 2023 with this momentum. You go into 2023 so fucking lit up and so excited to talk about what you have to talk about. So excited to have women come into your world or men, like whatever it is. But I want you to be able to have this fire in your belly because that's what your business should feel like. It should feel like buzzing, electricity, aliveness, excitement. And when you don't feel that in your business, I want you to get really clear with yourself. Are you consuming more content than you're creating? Because that's something that my coach told me when I went through my coaching certification at the very, very beginning of coaching. And it's always stayed important on my mind, but even now more so than ever, because I, if you are following me on social media, I'm producing more content than ever. And I'm so in love with it. Why? Because I'm not worried that I'm sharing too much because I'm not looking at what everyone else is doing because I'm not like doubting that this isn't, this is going to be too much or I'm going to be too loud or people are going to unfollow me because I'm posting too much or people aren't going to get it because I'm talking in this way. I'm deciding that I get to speak my message and I get to show up and I have, and I get to have so much fun and I get to create content because I fucking love creating content. Like if you don't love creating content, why are you running an online business? Because content creation is part of it. If you don't want to be on sales calls, if you don't want to be cold DMing people, you have to be able to magnetize people into your world. And I had a coach at the beginning, like a year into my business, tell me that content creation shouldn't be your only business. And 
that fucked me up so badly because I was so in love with creating content. And then she said that to me and I was like, oh my God, I don't, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh. When you create content and you speak about what you're doing and you speak about what you have to give, this builds your confidence. It builds your authority. There is so much value in creating content. And like, we're going to really get into this in BTB. And by the way, today is the last day to get in before the price goes up. So the price goes, actually the price goes up today. So because I just said that I will increase the price tomorrow on Friday. So December 2nd is when the price goes up, but you can get into BTB right now for 111 and there are payment plans. I'm going to walk you through my entire content creation process. Like you're going to get a behind the scenes look at how I create content, not just Instagram posts, but we're going to talk about how I create reels, how I create TikToks. Like we're going to have these conversations because in all honesty, a lot of coaches are dropping the fucking ball on TikTok and I just don't understand like why is the focus on fucking Facebook when Facebook is obsolete and for like a bunch of old people and like those aren't like that's not the new generation. We need to bring the new generation with us. We're trying to change the collective consciousness here. Well, I don't know about you, but that's my that's my jam. And if we're not bringing younger generations online into these conversations, then we are not serving our highest purpose. So yeah, this is way longer than I planned on it being, but welcome back to Alexa being activated and showing the fuck up. <laughs> so let me know how you feel about this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to stop ranting now, but if you want to learn how to fall in love with content creation, if you want to become really activated in your business again, like get into my world behind or building the brand starts in December and alchemy of manifestation is still open. So if you want to learn how to manifest, like that is the space for you to be and million dollar year, my membership, my first ever membership went live. So if you're claiming your million dollar year for 2023, you want to get in on this. This is going to give you access to one masterclass a month and you might get access to more, but minimally one masterclass a month. And we're going to talk about all of the things that are required for you to be able to have a million dollar year. It's going to be so epic, so major. And at whatever point you join, you'll get access to all of the previous masterclasses. So you'll be able to get my masterclasses cheaper than you would if you were investing in each one individually. And you'll be in a container for a year. So you're staying plugged into the energy of the million dollar year without being completely plugged into me. So that way you still have your own voice. So that way you're not sounding exactly like me, but you're sounding like you only amplified, only more powerful, only more confident, only more plugged in. So if you have any questions about any of the offerings I talked about, just let me know. Um, if you want mentorship, then DM me on Instagram. You can fill out the form on my website as well. Like whatever feels best for you. I'm here for you. I'm so, so, so excited. If you're ready to quantum leap in your business and your life, and you're ready to do it your way, you're ready to stand out and fall in love with your life and literally create your dream life and business, like get in my world. I love you so much. And until the next episode, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to go deeper and to get into my world, you can go to my website, alexaraysmith.com. You'll find all of my current programs on there. If you're desiring to get mentored by me, then the best thing to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can talk about mentorship options and which one's the best fit for you. If you're absolutely loving this podcast, please go rate it five stars and let me know why you're loving it. This will help me share the podcast with more people. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And until the next episode, keep manifesting the most incredible life.